Three minute limit. Sir Mike Penning. Thank you very much yeah, indeed, yeah, Mr yeah, Deputy yeah. Speaker. And I go back to the close to the final comments by the Shadow <coughs> Secretary of State when she said she was looking for a firefighter. Well, here he is. <laughs> uh, and a member of the FBU when it was thrown out of the Labour Party because we were too militant. So I've been around this circuit many, many times. And I found the contribution from the Honourable for Hazen Harlington quite frightening. Because you can reverse this argument that the trade unions are going to go, go back and get ready for a fight. That is turning around to the British public and saying, you voted Tory, so we're going to punish you. And that feeling is as strong in my constituency now. It is as strong in my constituency now and in other parts of the country as it's ever been. And this dispute does not need to take place. This doesn't need to take place because it is too early to call this sort of strike. Really, really early. Right at the front. Why now? Why such an early position to call the strike? Look, the Honourable Member has been from a set of tribunes and chuntering away for about the last two hours. Shut up! <laughs> right, because we're fed up with it. Order. Let's have much more conciliatory. Well, that's my job, not yours. Let's be conciliatory and use moderate language throughout this debate. It doesn't need any more heat. So, Mike Penning. What I'm trying to get across is there is anger here on both sides. And my constituents that won't be able to go to work because there are the people that are on strike who did not be able to go to work during the lockdown when the unions were getting their money. And what is going on here is that we are being punished. My constituents are being punished by the Labour Party that won't come out against this strike. Now, I'm not going to give way to him. He's been chuntering away for the last two hours. That's enough for anybody. Actually, at the end of the day, the Labour Party could contribute to this. They could turn around and say, this is the wrong time. This is not the right time. Instead of that, because their paymasters are so petrified, they're so petrified of their paymasters, they have to condone it. I'll give away to the Honourable. She's a good friend of mine, and I'll give away to her. I know, and I'm, I'm actually very fond of the Honourable Gentleman. So, so I'd like to say to him that his constituency isn't completely dissimilar to mine. We both know that we have got additional people using food banks and we both know that those people are in work and there's a huge amount of fear and reasonable fear within our communities about not being able to afford to put food on the table and to pay their rent. Doesn't the Honourable Gentleman agree with me that the Government has a responsibility to get around the table and to protect the livelihoods yeah and show some respect and concern for those who are suffering from the cost of living exactly. crisis. That's the point. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why it was so appalling for a trade union leader to turn around and say he'll never deal with a Tory government. He could come out with a letter on the day of the debate today when there's almost nobody on those benches, even though the, late, the unions pay for these benches almost completely in opposition. What? No, I said the benches, but not directly at the Honourable Lady. What can my constituents say when the figures coming out for a train driver, 50 odd thousand pounds a year, on my council estates, they dream of that sort of money every single day of the week. Yes, they do get paid less than me, but, they can, but people can put on the ballot paper and put their name up and have a go as well, which is why I beat a Labour MP in my seat. So the facilitary comments from the bank are not useful. What we need to do is not have strikes, not have cancellation of train services on my, on my, my commuters all the time. Southern Rail, we, we talked about earlier on, caused chaos in my constituents. Week in, week out, I listen to the rate, local radio, these trains are cancelled because we haven't got staff. The jobs are there. What is going on? Let's stop the strike. From a sedentary position, let's stop the strike now and then discussions can take. This is not a nationalised railway. These are employers, and that is the situation. That is a completely different situation. We're not in the days of the miners' strikes. We're not in the days where the government run the mines. These, the railways today are different, and I absolutely passionately believe that my constituents, and in the northern seats in particular, are going to be trying to be punished because the, the British public dared to vote Tory. Dared to vote Tory, and the union barons hate it, and so does the Labour Party. 